Hey guys, welcome back to the Nerve Channel. So, guess what? There's some new technology on the horizon, which I've actually talked about a little bit about before, but it's becoming more of a reality now. And this technology will allow up to a two and a half stop improvement in high ISO performance in camera image sensors for color cameras, okay? Now you say, how is that possible? Okay, I thought we already reached the limit. Well. Well, let me explain to you how it works and you'll very quickly see just how this is going to happen. All right, so first, let's break a preconceived notion that pretty much everybody has. And that's that these like, like color cameras like these, so like for instance, this guy right here has got an 80% quantum efficiency rating. And this one has about a 90% quantum efficiency rating. And for a long time, Everyone, like that's been the biggest developments in image sensors and what has improved their high ISO performance has been the increase in their quantum efficiency. And we've gotten very close to 100% now and really can't go any higher. And so a lot of people have, you know, looked at that technology and said, okay, I guess we're done. We can't really make image sensors any better. Well, actually a 90% quantum efficiency matter, that isn't actually true, <laughs> okay? It's it's kind of an example of, you know, marketing, you know, lying, so to speak, okay? Actually, in order to get 90% quantum efficiency, you have to use a model camera, okay? Once you throw the bare pattern on top of your pixels, essentially, you lose two thirds of your light because the filters that are built into the camera essentially absorb two thirds of the light. Like a model camera like this has the ability to shoot with no filtration on top of it. And that's where they measure the quantum efficiency of most of today's sensors. So, you know, what they're telling you is kind of true, but kind of not. <laughs> Let's go over to the whiteboard now and I'll kind of explain a little more about how this really works with numbers. Right. So the Bayer pattern, if you're not familiar with it, it, it basically divides the pixels in your camera up into this grid where you have two green pixels, one blue and one red. And there's filters over each of these pixels and those filters actually absorb uh, all the light that isn't that color that it's supposed to detect, okay? So in other words, if we hit this square of pixels here with white light, okay, just straight white light, you know, and in other words, it's got an even amount of red, green, and blue in it. This pixel right here is only going to accept 33% of that light because it's only going to allow the green light to pass through. The blue and the red is all going to get blocked. The same thing with this blue pixel up here. It's only going to accept at the absolute best, okay, 33% of the light is going to hit it. You know, the blue is going to be allowed to pass through. The other two wavelengths of light, the green and the red, they get absorbed, okay? Same thing with the red, 33%. Okay, and this is essentially why, like, a mo <laughs> so many astrophotographers switch to mono cameras uh, because you know when they shoot luminance, they can capture so much more light. You know, basically three times as much light. Now, what the new technology is is coming out. Okay, and I've alluded to it before in videos in the past, but it looks like it's becoming more of a reality. Okay is somebody has come up with a new pixel technology that allows them to stack, okay, three different types of sensing silicon, whatever you, call it, whatever you want to call it, okay, on top of each other, one that will uh, detect red, and one that will detect blue, and one that will detect green. And essentially what that means is that every single pixel then now is able to capture all three wavelengths of light and thus your quantum efficiency goes up by a factor of three for color cameras. And, and that's pretty cool, okay? And now I've seen other types of technologies that kind of tried to, to do this, you know, but, but this one actually kind of looks pretty promising. And we'll talk a little bit more about the company here soon. 
Now, what does this also mean? Well, one of the other things that this means is not only do we get a 3x you know, quantum efficiency boost, because this, this alone right here, the quantum efficiency factor, it means like, you know, about a 1.5x increase or, or stop increase in the possible high ISO performance of that particular camera. Another thing that this means is that the resolution is going to be much higher because right now with the bear pattern, your, your picture essentially gets blurred. Your 20 megapixel camera isn't really 20 megapixels of actual data, okay? It's five megapixels of red, five megapixels of blue, and 10 megapixels of green data. So essentially it's more than half the resolution of a camera like let's say that like like this one that's coming out that allows that it, or that is able to detect all three wavelengths of light at each pixel because right now a computer algorithm has to make up the information for the red and the green on this pixel has to make up the information for the green and the red on this pixel has to make up the information for the blue and the green on this pixel based on the surrounding pixels, essentially blurring the image, okay? Now, with this type of sensor though, where we're actually detecting this new type of sensor, where we're detecting all three wavelengths of light at each and every single pixel, what that's gonna mean is, is essentially a 10 megapixel camera that has this stacked, you know, type, uh, color array type technology built into it, it's a 10 megapixel camera will have the same resolution capabilities as a 20 megapixel Bayer pattern camera. And that, okay, means that we could basically increase the size of our pixels, decrease the number of megapixels in our cameras, okay, and still get the same resolution by a factor of, you know, two, you know? So essentially we could have pixels that are twice the size and therefore absorbing twice as much light and therefore twice as good at low light performance and therefore a one-stop improvement. So we would get on top of that, another one-stop improvement, giving us a total of 2.5 stops, okay? You know, camera terminology here, of high ISO performance improvement, which is, Awesome, okay, and, and this, this is, once again, for color cameras. Now, let's go talk about the company a little bit more. This new type of technology, it's called perovskite. I hope I'm pronouncing this right, <laughs> okay. It looks like, it, maybe it's Eastern European or something like that, or Polish, but anyways, the, the, t the title and the headline of this, this article says, perovskite sensor with 3x more light throughput. Okay, so, so here's kind of how it works. So pixels made of lead, I'm reading right from the article here, well, halide perovskite do not need an additional filter. It's already built into the materials, so to speak. The Ampon ETH researchers have succeeded in producing lead halide perovskites in such a way that they only absorb light of a certain wavelength, all right? And therefore, color, our color image, okay, but are, are transparent to all the other wavelengths of light. This means that the red, or green, or blue pixels can be stacked on top of each other instead of being arranged in a grid like you had to with the old bear pattern, okay? Uh, the resulting pixel can absorb the entire wavelengths of the spectrum of visible light you know, and that's essentially where you get a huge improvement in low light performance of these types of sensors. So, so this is actually really exciting. You know, this is kind of the first time I've seen, I, 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 I think this is going to be very promising. And, and you're probably wondering, okay, well, when am I gonna be able to buy a camera with this? Okay. <laughs> oh man, camera companies are so slow at picking up on technology these days maybe five years from now, you know, I hope not. I hope it's sooner than that. Cause I would love to, to have two and a half more stops of performance or one and a half, you know, with more resolution, you know, whatever you, you know, kind of choose to pick. 
you know, it, it's, it's actually, you know, I used to actually do about once a year a video about new, new image sensor technology because it's something, you know, I, I enjoy reading scientific papers about image sensors, okay? I, the engineer in me just, just, I don't know, is entertained by it. <laughs> Most of you would be really put to sleep by these papers that I read. But anyways, uh, the reason why like I've kind of stopped doing these videos is, well, well here, let me tell you. So in, in 2019, okay, there were 701 scientific papers released on new camera sensor technology. In 2020, okay, there were 795, okay, going up, okay, and, and by the way, most of these scientific papers, they're started three or four years ahead of time, and, you know, it's, it's usually like, they, they, they spend about a year testing the tech that they're writing about, and just making sure that what they're talking about is, you know, totally legitimate before they release it to the public. So in 2021, well, it dropped to 689. In 2022, it dropped 272. Okay. And, and this is kind of one of the reasons why I hate talking about COVID. And I hate it when people talk about COVID because COVID, oh, it, it, it pushed us into an economic collapse uh, as far as technology goes in this, in, in this particular world where image sensor technology has just gone into a dark age, folks. You know, because it, it, it gets even worse. In 2023, we only had 207 papers released. Okay, you know, they're, they're like for the last three years, there's been almost nothing technologically interesting that has come out uh, besides this new sensor technology I'm telling you today. And that's because of the, the way that COVID kind of destroyed our brains, so to speak, and interrupted our lives and didn't allow us to kind of do research and stuff. You know, and, and this year, uh, we might see a little bit of a recovery. Like, you know, we're more than halfway through the year and we're only at 134 papers that have been released. So uh, I know that's, that's kind of the depressing part of, you know, <laughs> looking at the world right now and, and, and retrospect where we used to be going. But, but yeah, so anyways, that's, that's kind of like, uh, something that you should look forward to and and hopefully like maybe some camera companies will see my video you know or you'll share it with them and they'll pick up on this and maybe like implement this into a camera because it looks very exciting i mean the increase in resolution uh the increase in uh high iso performance the and and, and here's another thing it sounds like the way this technology is designed they could actually break pixels, break light down into more categories. In other words, we could have cameras someday that kind of like, like Fuji Velvia, okay, the old film Fuji Velvia, that actually had seven layers in it that detected light seven different ways, you know, breaking it down in many, in many different ways. And that's one of the reasons why film the look of film is just impossible to emulate with these cameras that can only detect three different types of light. And that's because the films were actually detecting up to seven different wavelengths and being able to categorize them and, and, and basically interpret them, you know, into color that we could see. And, and that's what gave film this, this, this kind of look that you just can't emulate. You know, you know, and so, so yeah, this technology, it looks like they could break the pixels down even to further. Like maybe we could have a seven layer sensor that would detect seven different layers of light. You know, that would be awesome if we had like, maybe like a fourth layer that was in here that just detected hydrogen alpha, you know, that would be so cool. You know, but, but anyways, you know, that's probably a lot further down the road, you know. Now, if you have a hard time kind of believing the math that I've kind of showed you on the board and stuff like that, just go look at uh, some of the reviews that DP Review has done and also Petapixel on black and white cameras that like Leica has produced. They will tell you in those videos that those cameras had much better high ISO performance capabilities compared to the Keller version of the same sensor. And that's because 
the killer sound, the bear pattern basically eliminates, you know, two thirds of our light. You know, so if you don't believe me, just go out there, you know, you can kind of do some, uh, a little bit of, you know, just thinking yourself and you'll see that I'm right about this. So there we go. Hope I wasn't too much of a downer on technology there, but uh, this is exciting. Maybe we'll actually start see things picking up and, and moving again because, you know, this, this new technology could make one shot color cameras finally kind of edge out mono cameras because because right now the mono camera is still king in astrophotography you know if you really want to do great astrophotography and kind of upgrade your imaging you know you, you switch from a mono camera to, or excuse me a one shot color camera to a mono camera and this this layered technology could change all of that and and, and make imaging greater better uh, and easier for all of us, you know, which which I'm all for that. All right. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with people and uh, see you around.